Hey everybody, welcome. I'm really excited to uh, share this lesson with you. If you have felt like you've been feeling stuck on how to improve your mental health, um, particularly if you feel like you've got a nasty little repetitive thought that you can't seem to shake, or if you have a repetitive behavior that you do not like that you would like to change, then I'm gonna show you a really simple three-step process that works very, very well. I've used it for myself and many, many clients. And I think that you'll find it really refreshing. Um, in case you guys don't know who I am, my name is Ty Hicks. I'm founder of Mental Health Solutions and MentalHealthCoaching.com. And I'm a mental health coach. I used to be suicidal. I was hospitalized, put through uh, medications, therapy, coping mechanisms. It didn't really work well for me, but I figured out how to train my brain to think and feel how I wanted it to the majority of the time. And I've thankfully been um, depression-free for over 16 years. So I make these videos because I want you to have the tools to have the mental health you want. Um, you definitely can have the mental health that you want. You just got to learn how to um, acquire it. You know, it's a skills-based process. So let me walk with you through a simple little process. This process, let me share with you how I kind of discovered this. So in my early uh, years of coaching, one of the first types of problems I was helping people work on was uh, alcohol issues. And that's how I first stumbled on this little process. And um, so I remember one of my early clients, you know, he was a good guy, is a good guy. He's doing a whole lot better now, um, but he just had kind of a, a challenge with alcohol. And he had developed some habits where there were certain triggers as he went through the day that caused him to feel an urge to drink. And what I learned later on is that not everybody has a drinking problem, but everybody has a particular set of patterns where certain triggers happen, and then we have a habitual response to those triggers. And so that habitual response usually will come in the form of a habitual thought, a habitual feeling, or a habitual behavior, and it can often be a combination of those. So for you, it might be anxiety, for example. So for instance, maybe, you know, when you're about to head out of the house and go um, somewhere in public, your mind then starts to race into a particular thought of what if this bad thing happens, right? Um, for if it is an alcohol issue, for example, it could be that, you know, whenever it hits like five o'clock, right, your brain kind of has that little trigger of like, oh, well, let's go have a drink. Um, another example might be, let's say, anger. Um, so very often people will get triggered and, and feel angry in response to something that their partner habitually does, as just an example. So a simple metaphor you can use to kind of understand this, you might have heard me explain this in another video, is think of the mind like a jukebox. So the, the mind has got maybe like 100 CDs in it. And then if you go up to a jukebox, you type in a sequence of numbers and letters. That's the trigger, right? And then a CD <clears throat> is brought forward that is attached to that trigger and it plays the CD. So our minds work in the same way because our minds are conditioned through association. And so what happens is a particular trigger will happen and our mind will have that same habitual response and it becomes a conditioned response. So the whole point why you'd be in a group like this or be watching, you know, our YouTube channel or, or participating in any of our online communities is you're looking to make a change in that CD. You're looking to make a, a change in that habitual response. Okay, so just kind of think like what those types of things might be for you. And let me explain this little three-step process. It works really well. It's called if-then planning. So here's the way that I discovered this. Um, there is a, a story from the Obama presidential campaign. And so whether you like Obama or don't like Obama, it doesn't really matter for the purposes of the story. But so uh, what is commonly known is that during the Obama campaign, the get out the vote effort was uh, huge. Uh, the, there was a lot of voter turnout that hadn't been there in previous presidential elections. And there were a couple factors for that. But one of the big factors was that there was a very different get out the vote strategy that was done and it changed voter behavior. So people, even Democrats who would have typically not voted before, but they were registered to vote, did go out and vote. And a big reason was the campaign had this very particular strategy that they would do. So what would happen in the past before Obama, right? So say like John Kerry or one of these older democratic uh, candidates, 
Typically, common practice in the political industry is you call up a list of registered voters and you say, hey, you know, I'm calling on behalf of the Obama campaign. Can we count on your vote on November 6th? The voter says yes. And then you say, great, we'll see you at the polls. And you hang up. But the Obama campaign did something totally different. So what they did is when they called, they would say, hey, I'm calling from the Obama campaign. Uh, we'd really love to count on your vote on November 6th. Can we count on your vote? And they'd get people to say yes, but they wouldn't stop there. They would then say, fantastic. Do you know where your polling location is? And so now think about it, right? If you're a voter hearing this on the other end of the phone, you're going, oh, well, I don't know if I know where my polling location is. And then the volunteer could say, oh, no problem. Go ahead, grab a pen and write this down. And so now the voter is going to physically write down the location of the polling location. All right. And they go, oh, well, thank you. Now I know where to go. Then the volunteer says, yeah, fantastic. And around what time of the day can we expect to see you? All right. So now the, the voter has to go in their head and go, oh, well, that'll be a Saturday, I guess. You know, if it's a Saturday, uh, I guess I'll have to get there about 11 a.m. You know, that's after, you know, I, I, I get done with my morning groceries or, you know, whatever. Right. They have to mentally prepare a plan of how they're going to vote. And the volunteer would go through this whole list of questions of what time are you going to get there? Are you driving there? Or do you need to take a bus? Do you know what bus route you need to take? Are you driving with someone else? Right. And they would go through this whole thing where they would make sure that the voter had thought through mentally every step of the process of voting. And now think about that, right? That Compare that, compare a voter who has said, yes, I will go. Yes, I know where my polling location is. Yes, I know what time I will be there. Yes, I will know how I'm getting there, right? And they've planned all of that out in their head. They've done a script we call the subconscious scripting. They've made a script for themselves of what they're going to do on November 6th. Compare that to just a regular voter who says, oh, yeah, I think I'll go. Which one is going to be more likely to show up, right? Your common sense obviously tells you it's going to be the one with the more detailed plan. And you might have even experienced this at some point in your life when you've tried to set a goal for yourself. A common one would be like weight loss or exercise. So what a lot of people will do is they'll say, yeah, you know what? It's around New Year's time. I really need to start working out. I, I'm going to start working out in the new year. And that's about all they'll say to themselves. They won't make it any more specific than that. Now, compare that to somebody who says, you know what? Not only am I going to work out, I'm going to go to this gym starting on January 5th. And I'm going to go before work at 6 a.m. in the morning. And when I get at the gym, I'm going to follow this five-day workout plan five days a week. I'm going to do crunches on Wednesday. I'm going to do chest and back on Monday. I'm going to do yoga on Thursday, right? The, the more they map that out in their mind, exactly what they're going to do, what it, this does is it eliminates the need for the mind to burn mental calories in advance, okay? And this is the key part of this teaching I really want you to get. When your mind has to burn too many mental calories to figure out what it's going to do, it will revert to its lowest base level conditioned response. Let me say that again. When your mind has too many mental calories to burn in terms of making a decision, it will revert to its lowest common denominator, the lowest conditioned response, okay? So the little phrase I try to teach my clients is, we do not rise to the level of our goals, we sink to the level of our conditioning. And that's just the truth. Right? Because if all we had to do was set a goal, then there would be no overweight people in the world. It just wouldn't exist. Right, But that's not the case. The reason why we, we don't get what we want often with our mentality and our, our, uh, you know, our physical health and our finances and all these types of things is we sink into our conditioned response to things, our conditioned decision-making processes. Okay? And we all do this. This is just how the brain is hardwired is it runs off of scripts. It runs off of patterns. So if you don't have the life that you want, you don't have the mental health that you want, it means you don't have the patterns that you need to get the quality of life that you want. So the process I'm going to explain here will help you start to shift those patterns. So it's a three-step process. Okay, so here's what you want to do. If you're taking any notes, what you would want to have here is you'd want to have three columns, okay? So we've got X, Y, and then Z, okay? And here's the format that you want to have in your notes, okay? Here's the phrase, the template. 
the template is when x x occurs when x occurs that's the trigger okay so when x occurs don't do y okay which is the habitual response do z instead okay so let me give you a few examples so uh when friday at five o'clock rolls around don't go out drinking with my buddies instead go home and uh drink a non-alcoholic beer instead okay i'm just pulling this from an example of a past client right uh when it's when i need to get in the car and drive somewhere don't ask myself what if bad thing happens what if i crash the car instead focus on it going well and it going smoothly okay so this is a tool that is very powerful when you combine it with other tools that I teach. Okay, so if you're kind of new to our online community, there's a lot of other things that you can learn that will help you get the types of mental health that you want. So there's there's other things there, but you kind of get the basic idea of it. Um, just for the sake of this particular lesson today, I'll stick with more simple examples. Um, I did another woman comes to mind uh, that I did this with where she was trying to lose weight. And so, you know, I just simply asked her, what is the single change or decision you would need to make with your diet or your exercise that would really shift the, the needle for you and help you get closer to your weight loss journey? And for her, she had like a big thing with like Oreos, right? So she would like, she would have dinner and then she'd eat like four or five Oreos at night. And she knew that that was a big problem. And so she had tried to quit Oreos before. The problem was when you try to just get rid of the old conditioned response, you'll find it very difficult to do that. And your mind will feel compelled to go back and grab onto it again, because our nervous system has to be new to meet its basic needs at the same level or a higher level, right? So this is kind of a key principle of psychological conditioning is you can't just focus on the problem you can't just focus on uh, what you want to get rid of you have to replace it with something better so another example of that would be you can't just get rid of a negative belief about yourself like you can't just stop saying oh gosh why am i such a loser you need to replace that with a different belief and condition the new belief until it takes hold and it becomes what you really believe uh, if you want to change an intrusive thought, it's the same thing. You want to change a belief, same thing. You want to change a behavior, same thing. You need to find something new to replace it with. And so for her, we came up with, um, if I remember correctly, I think it was fresh fruit is what she, what she did. So she liked strawberries. So we said, okay, great. So instead of, you know, when it's dinner time, when dinner is over, that's the trigger for her. That's the X, right? When X, when dinner is over, don't eat oreos instead eat three strawberries and so she wrote that out and she had that really planned out so now her mind knows what the new action is what the new program is okay and what's really cool about this is you essentially hijack the nervous system's way of operating because the way the nervous system operates is through association it works by saying a leads to b so dinner time leads to oreos right uh, talking to my mom on the phone leads to me getting angry, et cetera. It creates associations, connections. So what you do through this if-then planning process is you tack on a C to that sequence. So you essentially tell the brain, yeah, when A occurs and you feel the urge to do B, we're going to do C instead. So you start to build a new association, and now you can just create a, a link between A and C. And now you've got the new association. And over time, it starts to replace itself. So I've used this with all sorts of clients with all sorts of problems. Um, again, the most common things you can use this with are repetitive thoughts, repetitive beliefs, repetitive um, behaviors, right? Those are the common ones. So what I do very often with our clients in their first couple of weeks is I take them through a process where I help them identify because it's very tough to identify this totally on your own. Everybody is able to identify a couple of their patterns on their own, but some of them are subconscious. But I help people learn how to identify each one of their triggers and each one of their habitual responses that's getting them in trouble. And then what we do is we start to engineer uh, a new pattern, a new response based off of whatever the client's goals are. So anyway, I hope that this is really helpful. I'd love to see any comments you have. 
Um, you know, if you found that this was helpful, please let me know um, in the comments or save this for later. It'd be fantastic. And uh, by the way, if you feel like you are a little lost or you're not sure how to, excuse me, make um, progress on your own particular goals, um, we do offer um, free calls. Um, on a regular basis so that I can give you a little individual advice on your particular situation. So if you ever want to speak um, individually and get some individual feedback on where you're at and what your best next step is, um, just simply go to mentalhealthcoaching.com and you can go ahead and book uh, a free appointment with me whenever you'd like to. Um, but I hope this has been helpful. Save this. Uh, let me know any, any comments or questions you have. And again, if you'd like to speak individually and get some um, some fast track help on your particular situation, just go to mentalhealthcoaching.com. But thanks for being a part of our online community, and I'll look forward to serving you in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye.